So far, we've looked at the purpose and role of contracts and the process to follow to manage a contract. We now understand how to manage contracts during business as usual and when change arises. Now we are going to quickly go through some tools and tips for better contract management. The tools and techniques we will look at are good project management, communication, negotiation, documents and record keeping, risk transfer. When projects run smoothly and the works are planned and coordinated effectively, issues and disputes are less likely to arise. For a well-executed and coordinated package of works, the principal and contractor may successfully complete the works without ever referring to the contract. Both parties would understand what they are responsible for and get on with doing the works without issue. In this way, the contract manages itself. On the other hand, a project that is under duress, where things are going wrong, costs are blowing out, and works are constantly delayed, is much more likely to result in commercial issues. Both the principal and contractor will look to the contract to try and find ways to recover costs and save themselves. Badly run and managed projects will almost always result in some form of commercial dispute. Effective project management and disciplined delivery of the project scope will make managing the contract simple. On the other hand, if we do not have control over the project scope, then it makes it very hard to manage the contract effectively. Some of the key elements of disciplined delivery include effective setup of the project with a work breakdown structure and project control strategy. This will ensure the project scope is fully understood and any contractual obligations are clearly identified. A smooth handover and transition from the tendering or procurement team to the delivery team. This will ensure critical knowledge is maintained and not lost. The development and maintenance of a project schedule that reflects the way the work is actually taking place and being completed. Monitoring and controlling costs through productivity tracking and other expenditure controls. Project management plans and systems developed and implemented. For example, the development of an effective quality assurance system to ensure compliance to the project technical specifications and management and engagement of the project stakeholders. A contract is always between two parties, the principal and the contractor. To deliver the contract works, these parties will need to be constantly communicating. The principal will need to coordinate and provide access for the principal, review and approve payment claims and negotiate contractual claims. The contractor will need to provide status updates and reports, submit payment and contractual claims, and work with the principal to deliver the project scope. The principal and contractor need to be able to communicate effectively and share information to deliver the contract works. The relationship between the two parties is critically important. They need to be willing to work together to resolve issues and challenges as they arise on the project. Any animosity and personality clashes can lead to situations that escalate unnecessarily. If the two parties do not like each other, then issues are unlikely to be resolved in the simplest and easiest ways. Ultimately, the whole reason the two parties came together and signed a contract in the first place was to collaborate. Collaboration is much easier if it is built upon a strong relationship. The primary focus of this relationship should be on getting the job done, not on commercial and legal issues. The contract is there simply to support the relationship. Some general tips for developing and maintaining strong relationships between parties are ensure regular meetings and correspondence. Correspondence should be recorded and documented. Raise any potential issues as early as possible and work through them together. Be polite and reasonable, never aggressive. Consider the other party's opinions and point of view. Be realistic and flexible. Leave aside ego and pride. Be aware of potentially sensitive and difficult issues and address them appropriately. A genuine attempt should be made to resolve all claims and issues in the simplest and most straightforward way possible. In general, the less people that are involved, the better. Failed negotiations can lead to failed projects and work stopping. Some reasons for failed negotiations are being too aggressive, failing to properly consider the other party's needs and objectives, failing to be flexible, being concerned about reputation and losing face, and focusing on contractual and legal issues rather than moving the project forward. On the other hand, negotiating and assertiveness is an important part of contract administration. Any party is naturally incentivized to push for the outcome and result that best suits their business needs and interests. It is important that we also defend and protect our own interests. Negotiating is an important part of ensuring we achieve our own project outcomes. We should focus on achieving equitable outcomes. Some general tips for negotiating from award-winning negotiation expert Chris Voss are seize control of negotiations by making the first offer and setting the terms. Research shows that the first offer often determines the final price. Use concrete numbers instead of a range when discussing money to avoid giving away the upper hand. Don't reveal your minimum price up front. Use silence to your advantage and listen carefully to your counterpart. It can reveal valuable information and help you make better counteroffers. 
Ask open-ended questions to extract valuable information from the other party. Avoid simple yes or no questions. And aim for win-win outcomes in negotiations where both parties benefit. Don't approach negotiations with a win-lose mentality and maintain honesty throughout the process. Documents and record keeping are an essential part of contract management. Good documents and records will make managing a contract successfully much easier. Records are needed as evidence for all sorts of issues. Fundamentally, a contract is a promise to do something from one party to another. This agreement is a form of record. As the project progresses, other agreements will be made and information will be shared. This can all have commercial implications and any communication should be recorded in a system like TeamBinder or Econix. Records will also be needed to form, negotiate and settle contractual claims. For example, if a contractor makes an extension of time claim and is trying to quantify the costs, they will need to know the true stand-down costs incurred and ongoing preliminary costs, as well as the accurate start and finish of the delay event. This information will be critical to getting a claim reviewed and approved. It cannot be overstated how important effective documents and records are when it comes to contract management. Risk transfer is an important part of contract management and an effective tool to achieve project outcomes. Through contracts, risk and responsibility are transferred from one party to another. Where we are acting as the contractor, one method for managing contract risks is to transfer them to our own subcontractors. We effectively take the liabilities and responsibilities we have and transfer them to a subcontractor through procurement. This is known as going back to back, where the subcontractor is now responsible for managing the head contract risk. We protect ourselves by ensuring our vendors and supply chain are signed up to the same terms and conditions that we are signed up to in the head contract. For example, if we're an electricity project developer and we have signed a power purchase agreement with a customer that states we need to provide 100 megawatts of electricity on the 1st of February 2024 or incur liquidated damages of $2,000 per day, then while procuring an EPC contractor to deliver the project scope, we would specify in the contract a practical completion date of on or before the 1st of February 2024 and have liquidated damages of $2,000 per day. This is a back-to-back -back risk transfer, where we have transferred our obligations for time to the contractor. Risk transfer is not just limited to the general and specific contract terms, but also includes technical specifications and other obligations. Other examples of risk transfer include design life, time bars, technical requirements, scope of works, and safety system requirements.